<laughs> yeah, man. Today we welcome one of Jamaica's finest acting talents on both screen and stage, an individual who has been acting for well over two decades, right? More than two? Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. And has been in <laughs> numerous dramatic productions, much more than we can list right here at this moment. Mm -hmm. True Jamaican stalwart, a man who, was, who has helped lay the foundation for Jamaican theatre, Mr. Glenn Campbell. Welcome, sir. No respect. All right. Good to be here. It's always good to begin at the beginning. So tell us about your early life and how that influenced your choice to become an actor. Um, well, as long as I can remember, or as long as I know myself, I um, always liked the performing arts. So I want to tell people who used to dance and sing before them say, I drop me a mate, but I see your stick. And I find yeah. that hard. <laughs> we love the dancing and singing. So even growing up, I was in dance groups at school and, and community groups and I uh, was involved in church choir and school choir. And it's when I started high school and um, I got a chance to join the drama club in third form, Jamaica College, by the way. Just make me have to put it out eh? Jamaica College, the best high school in Jamaica. Anyway, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so when I got the chance to join the drama club um, and I was exposed to seeing theatre, live theatre, Say wow, and I actually saw a musical. So it, was, it had dancing and singing in it. I'm saying, but what are there? You can dance and sing at the same time. You can do all three in a one. So I'm gonna try this thing. And more and more as I ventured into it, I realized that I actually was a little better at the acting than I was at singing and dancing. And so I'm saying, you know, God love me, stick to the one I'm better at. So <laughs> and that was it. That was back in 1981. That was my first commercial production called The New Jokers, written by Louis Marriott. Mm -hmm. And I was still in school, actually, still in sixth form at JC. I'm going to say, um, let me try that thing, and I'm going to say, the rest is history. So I understand that you didn't necessarily, or your first audition was some, somebody recommended you, and you just went. Yeah, just yeah. To, you know, um, just for the sake of it, and then as it turned out. We don't know. Um, we, them claims they used to chat enough for school, mm -hmm. do more chatting than work. And so, and I always give in trouble. So my English teacher at the time, Miss Main, she said, um, you know, Campbell, call, call people by surnames in high school, Campbell, um, I have a friend of mine who's having auditions for a production he's doing, and I know you dabbling this little drama thing every now and again. You know, just go have a look and see what it's like. You know, maybe later on, mm -hmm. you might want to venture into this sort of thing. And so... I left school today in my uniform, same way. Went up to Springvale Avenue, that was the headquarters of Fab Five mm -hmm. and Louis Marriott Productions. And met Grub Cooper, Frankie, Campbell, Louis Marriott, all of them. And just sat in, watched the auditions, and they said, You want to audition? And I said, Yeah, well, why, 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 not? why not? And I auditioned, and Grub said, Nobody, no, my youth, nobody at all. Yeah. And Louis said, You want to be in the show? We just come to look at it in the show. Yeah, right. that was it. <laughs> just like that. So did when you were, I mean, taking you back to young you now, did you ever think that it would have spanned this much, spanned this far, your career would have really hit this trajectory and um, done as much as it did? How no. Are you, are you surprised that no, it um, I won't say I'm surprised, but at the same time, it wasn't something I was necessarily working towards. Um, like everybody else, I was schooled that doctor, teacher, lawyer, That's you know, right. something you need to have, have substance as a job. And so, um, we try with the chem and the physics and it never to work out. And then we try like, with, with the history, we never too bad. Uh, but I, I realized that um, academics wasn't necessarily my thing. I mean, I, I did enough to get through um, high school and college and everything. But I found out that this is where my love really was, mm -hmm. performing. And so they said, as I said to a lot of young people nowadays, go after your dreams, go after what you think you're good at. Mm -hmm. Don't say, you go try do medicine, you're not good at medicine at all, at all, at all, at all. You know, you go after what you're good at. And so very early, I realized that I was pretty good at this thing called acting. And so by four or five years into doing it as a hobby, I said, you know what? Maybe there's some scope in this thing else. Let me see if we can venture further into it. So I went and I did courses in theatre studies and I learned more about the craft mm -hmm. and learned on the job. 
and here I am today after 35 years in the business so still around, doing it and still loving it all right around what age did you begin I just you get a sense of the kind of your age at the time as you kind of made that well as I plan. said um my first production I was 17 still mm -hmm. in high school and after high school I went I started working work with government for a little while and then I went on to work with telephone company and even during that transitional period mm -hmm. I still worked and went to school and did theater at the same time it was sometime around about 1990 90, 92 thereabouts um, while still at telephone company I said um, all right, the full-time thing and the acting thing some clashes yeah, happening no there and as my manager at the time said to me you know quite frank and honest discussion one day say um glenn you need to decide which is it that you want to do mm -hmm. i was doing all right with public relations because i'm a people person and i did well in that department but he says you need to decide is it working in corporate jamaica or is it working in the theater industry mm -hmm. and the creative entertainment industry and so i made the decision in 1994 that i'm going to do theater full time and it was a some struggles in the early years because I mean you couldn't find a play for do every day or every week. Exactly. You that know, so me. it was holy for That brings me right to the next question, which is parts. being an actor in Jamaica especially is not easy. Yes. So how have you managed to stay working and stay relevant all these years? Keep um, that, you know. Th that's a very good um point. You have to keep relevant and keep current. Um back in the days when I used to start out, um there was youthful exuberance and you know, everything was loud and big and hey. And as I grew, old, grew older, I, I realized that it doesn't have to be all that sometimes. Sometimes just a slight raise of the eyebrow or how you word yourself and your tone and you say all the nuances and things are different. And so you, you, you start to explore more. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, after 35 years in the business, you can't do the same thing you did 35 years ago. Right. People are like, ah, Glenn, can we get tired now, man? Mm -hmm. If you go retire. Actually, I've heard a few people. <laughs> not really. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> me not going nowhere. Good. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, but you have to keep relevant. You have to keep current. And you have to have a real genuine love for it. It can't be just a work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be something that you wake up with a passion every day. On a day when I don't have a show, I say, oh, I want to take a moment on a show today. And when the show is on a break for a week, we say, I do have nothing to do, I'm bored. And, yeah, but I keep current and I keep active. And in terms of um, supporting myself and my family, it's not at the stage yet where you can do theatre alone. Mm -hmm. There are very few people, I don't know of, of any really, that just doing only, only, only theatre, mm -hmm. you know. You have to get your little commercial on radio or TV every now and again. You um, get a little film work with mm -hmm. a movie company come down and you get a little walk on roll or even an extra. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I, I do other stuff as well in terms of I also adjudicate for JCDC, the National Speech and Drama Competition. Mm -hmm. For many years I've been working with them to help hone and you know nurture encourage the, and nurture, yeah, the, nurture the upcoming people. Cause Face facts. Me, me, me not go there forever. So yeah, me unfortunately, have to, yeah, me have to go and guide and help and nurture and encourage some of the younger folks coming up so that they can hopefully get, get to my stage one day. So as you can imagine, most persons, most Jamaicans, at least maybe within a particular age range, them know your titles. Mm -hmm. Your titles, mm -hmm. as far as I can turn, your titles. Yeah. My mother, so, when they start advertising me as Glenn Titus Campbell, I say. Oh Jesus, I know so my christening boy, you know, my christening Glenroy Godfrey Campbell. But Glenn Titus Campbell, everybody knows me as that. And it's, it's the love and the admiration, so I may have to hug it up. You know? so what did that role do for your career? It was like I was going like this, and after the title, that was it, just take off. Because that's the power of television, we have mm -hmm. to admit it. Mm -hmm. um, and back in the days when people used to call, um, quarrel and cuss about them pirate this up a TV and thing, but myself and Oliver, I think we have benefited mm -hmm. from people back in the days when you tape it VHS and you know send go get your friend them a foreign and thing. So we reach a point now where the diaspora and Caribbean and anywhere that a Jamaican set them foot, 
let me know about Oliver and let me know about Titus because somebody sent them the tape. Mm -hmm. And now with the advent of YouTube, I mean, yeah. everybody. It's like a rebirth. Yeah, so it's, it's all over again. People are discovering Titus and Titus in town. And that was done back in 1990. And I have young people now asking about M16, the dog. And, <laughs> you know, they, they're just seeing it for the first time and saying, wow, I saw Jamaican comedy. Why don't you bring back some of them something there? Exactly. The powers at me. <clears throat> Anyways, <laughs> we're working on it. We're working right. on it. All right. Theatre has gone through a lot of changes and transitions over the years. As far as I can tell, being really popular in the early 90s, kind of going a little dormant in the early to mid new millennium, and then kind of having a resurgence since the early 2000s going forward. What would you account has been that kind of for the, for the transitions and the movement and the ebb and flow in the way things have um, gone so far? It's. A generational thing. Um, so I, I think back in the days when I started theatre, and a lot of us were doing it as a hobby, um, and the people who came to theatre were of a certain ilk in society. It was mainly middle and middle upper class. Um, like a working class man never really see it mm -hmm. as the kind of thing that the average man on the road do. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, there was a shift where I, I think to theatre did itself some harm in terms of the sort of products who went. They weren't of the same standard in terms of professionalism, in terms of even sets and costumes and scripts and so on. They were just ah, oh, near very flat and very mundane. Mm -hmm. Even some might say even went a little bit down in the gutter. And so people said, Jamaican theatre is rubbish and ghetto thing and, you know? The roots. Yeah, the roots yeah, got a bad hitting, yeah? yeah? And so when we formed, we formed Jambiz International, the company that I work with, back in 1997. Mm -hmm. And ourselves, um, Basil Dawkins, and a couple other writers started to tell stories that were Jamaican about everyday people that everybody could relate to. Mm -hmm. Whether you're upper class, middle class, or lower class, working class, whatever. Everybody could relate to the stories that were being told. And so more and more we found people coming back out. And you're going, somebody come and see the show and we say, but you never know, so I saw theater and play nice. And then we tell somebody else and somebody else tell somebody else. And that's how it happened. And we started going around the country now, starting carrying players to Mobile and Mandeville and Ochi, and then we start go Clarendon, and then we start go Santa Cruz, and then we start go Morant Bay. And more and more, the average man on the street was exposed to theater and realize that it's something that they could enjoy, something that they could relate to. And so now we're at a stage where I think the average Jamaican, even if they haven't seen it, know about plays and know that it is something out there that happens that they can be a part of if they want to. All right. And going back a little bit, focusing more so on you again, what would you say have been some of the most difficult moments you've endured in your career as you've gone over the years? Difficult moments. Um, oh, you know what? I should probably before I hit it, before you go there, mm -hmm. I want to uh, tackle the question of what you think can be done to kind of, even though we're on a very good flow right now, so far as the popularity of plays and stage productions are concerned, you think? I, I personally think there could be, we could be having more. We could theater district uh, play yeah, yeah, and yeah. every month or something like that. What do you think could be done to kind of take it to that level from um, where you sit? It boils down to resources. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, uh, as much as we'd want to produce and put productions out there, there's not enough theater space. There's not enough... Um, and even if, even if they're not actual theater spaces, even a hall or a center with adequate lighting and seating or capacity put in certain sets we, we don't have that mm -hmm. and so that is one of the drawbacks that we're facing and to even the same public that like i say is being exposed to it now there's still so much more that, that people can actually latch on to and say yes i'm a part of it the introduction of theater arts in the school's curriculum mm -hmm. that's a big help and a big step because now people who take theatre arts have to go to a play and have to critique it. Mm -hmm. And so, although some is even like kind of the force them into it, but having been forced into it, I'm saying, wow, we really like this. And I'm going to tell mom and then say, yo, I'm going to go watch Glenn Campbell in a Duffy Whisperer or whatever. And 
funny, you know, mommy, it's it nice, you know. And then bring the family. And so more people are being exposed to it. So we need to expose people more. We need to have more resources. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, again, I think even some of the people in the industry itself need to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Some people just doing our work. Some people just come like almost like you're forced there. <laughs> okay. You know? And and back in the days when a lot of us were doing it just as a hobby, some of that passion has gone. The people just have a love for it and will bend over backwards to, you know, give of themselves mm -hmm. to better the art form and the industry. So we have we need more dedication, we need more exposure and we need more resources. Those are the things that will make this thing just skyrocket. As you mentioned, a theatre district, or uh, you know, um, a season of plays or whatever. The whole heap of things we can do. Theatre and education, some production houses, some people are doing it already. We take literature books from theatre, mm -hmm. from, from school and Jamaican you put them on stories, stage. Yes. Like that. You know, the amount of people, if they sit down and read a book, as again, seeing it performed on stage, I assure you, I promise you, that people who see it performed on stage will remember it more mm -hmm. and grasp more from it. You, you know? You've traveled, you've seen it. How does our, our, our theater work, our stage productions, how do they stack up? Naturally, we can't necessarily compare ourselves to Broadway and those kind of elaborate And I, I beg and to disagree. Right. We can. I have people, friends, total strangers, who have come and have seen, well, I can speak for my production at Center Stage and mm -hmm. Jambis. And they come and they say, how do you all do it? With little or no resources, some of the effects that we're able to create on stage. And not to mention the quality of the acting and the mm -hmm. scripts that we have been producing over the years. Mm -hmm. And they say, this can go anywhere. This can stand up on the West End in London or in Broadway in New York, anywhere. We have gone to Broadway and seen things that we say, oh, what ladies of the night don't have Jamaica and lick this for six, right? So we do measure up like our athletics. We are top of the world. We just need a little more help to All put right. it at the same level that they are at. And the receptiveness from foreign audiences. Oh, oh my, oh my, that is just amazing. I, I, I always, people ask me, one of my mem most memorable um, things in theatre, and I remember going to Carrie Festa, I think it was in 2005 or six. I don't remember the year exactly, but going to Guyana, and myself and Oliver Samuels, and a cast including Camille Davis, Courtney Wilson, Keisha Elliston, um, I, Sherry, I don't remember if Sherry was in it. I'm not sure. Anyway, and the cast going, and like this, as I said, this is Carrie Festa where you have productions from all around the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And every time the Jamaican, myself and Oliver, went on stage, crowd out the road, mm -hmm. riot police, <laughs> barrier half a put up. The schedule for the two show, we have to end up at the tree. Midnight, people say, we now go home. And at midnight, we have to do another performance. Mm -hmm. That is the love and the magnitude and the power that the Jamaican theatre and we as performers and entertainers have around the region and in the wider world. All right, so we are that good. We are that respected and that good. loved. All right. We just want to be established. Yes, man. Go on. I'll back to the question now about some of the more difficult moments you've had to endure in your career. Um, funny, I haven't had that many challenges, thank goodness. Um, one of my personal drawbacks, I think, or one of the things that I have to battle with a lot is public acceptance. Mm -hmm. And not as Glenn Campbell or Glenn Titus Campbell, because I yeah, love Glenn Titus Campbell, God forbid, mm -hmm. and anything we do. And it's accepting that I'm an actor first and foremost, mm -hmm. and then a comic actor second. Okay, yes. Actor that's first. True. That's true. And then I handle comedy very well. So that's the old, I think that's one of the major challenges I've had. So I'll be on stage in a dramatic road or role or a tragedy. And yeah, somebody say, What well, Titus are going with? You're not funny. Yeah. Titus, you know, you know, you're not going out, man. That's why you're not funny, boss. Mm. That was my intention. It's not a funny script I'm doing. You know? Um, I remember being on a movie set the other day. 
and one of the casting directors said, um, boy, we send you up for this role, you know, but um, the director, I'm not too sure if he want to use you. I said, what do you mean want to use me? No, he said, um, Titus, the comedian, he can't do that role. Uh. And I, I live to see me go on the set, do the role, and the director come to me and said, the level of professionalism and the depth of the work that you did, mm -hmm. awesome. You blew me away. Didn't know you had it in you. And this is people you think would I know look better and accept say when I do in titles that's a character, when I do something else, it's a character. You know? So that's one of the drawbacks I think I face. But apart from that, I think I've been blessed. Right. Blessed by the love from people and the cooperation and help of the directors like Trevor Nairn and Patrick Brown, Barbara Blood and Trevor Rowan. I've I've I grew up with the stalwarts and the foundation people in theatre. I learned so much from Oliver, being on stage with him for more than six years six nights a week, 10 months a year, you know. Um, I've learned from these people and I think I've been really, really blessed wow. over my 35 years in the industry. Naturally, the next question, best moments, some of those, what, what, have, been, what have been some of those? Well, I, I mentioned the Carifest um, incidents. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think for me also another memorable moment was being invited to perform on a production called Miss Lou and Friends. Mm -hmm. This was, I think, back in 1990. Um, they were having a special performance of honoring Miss Lou for her work in theater and Jamaican entertainment. And um, little me, remember I started in 1981. Mm -hmm. And so this is just eight, nine years into my being in the business. And we get a call that they'd like us to um, submit or perform a piece from one of the productions I was in. So look at me, they're from the same stage with Lou, with Louis Bennett and Charles Hyatt and Oliver Samuels and Leone Fox and Fieli Dada, Marjorie Wiley. And mm. Yo, how to contact to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that was, that was something that stood out in my things that I remember that I said, yes, that was a good moment. I also remember going to the Black Theatre Festival in North Carolina mm -hmm. to represent Jamaica um, with Trevor Rowan and a production he did called Dear Counselor. And, and just being in the same space with people that you see on TV mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and them watching know. me on stage and saying, young man, you're quite good, you know, you're pretty good, pretty good, I love the work, you know, and say, yeah, man, yeah. Naturally, it's in that the same, same issue of comedy versus dramatic actor, but I mean, the question then is why haven't you, uh, I don't want to say why haven't you pursued, but how come persons haven't seen you in more dramatic things and know your range, even though you um, naturally take the comedy, it's clear, yeah. but at the same time to uh, you know, show people your diversity and your range to do other dramatic pieces? Um, it's a somewhat unfortunate situation, but we have to face facts. In Jamaica, the tragedies and the dramatic pieces are not going to sell as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's down to a business decision. Okay. Um, and what we've been able to do quite cleverly, Patrick Brown and Jambiz over the years, is that we, st we are still able to feed the public a certain amount of dramatics and a certain amount of tragedy. And so you'll see your actors come and them people come and say, yo, Camila Ball for real, you know? Yeah, because the play calls for it. And we, so we're able to intersperse it with that. Um, but as I said, that, that's the basic truth. And the it's, it's the nature of the business. I remember we did a production one year. Myself, Charles Hyatt, and Christine Bell, God rest her souls, both departed now. But we opened the production. I think it was called State of Emergency. We opened the production, let's say, for argument's sake, beginning of September. And we butter and butter and butter and butter for four weeks. And you can count the number of people that turned up to see the show. Excellent script, mm -hmm. excellent acting. Everybody in production was nominated. I think Charlie and Christine probably even won Best Actor and Best Actresses that year. I don't, I don't remember exactly. But the point is that the product, the product itself was of such a high standard. But 
So the making people wasn't, upset. wasn't receptive. No, we can't stress on the gas price gone up and flower gone up and come and take it when we come up made that hurt me. <laughs> we know you're not that bossy. So, and, and that's what most people say. They say, yep, under too much stress, they see theatre as entertainment and something to lift their spirits and make them smile a while and give your face a rest kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so, when it's too heavy, they can't manage it, mm -hmm. right? And so as much as we'd want to, again, if we had more resources where we never have to depend upon the box office mm -hmm. or how much tickets sell to determine what we put on stage, then we could do so much more, so, so much more we could have done or we can do if we're able to do that. But if we depend on the box office, we have to put on a product that people will spend the money to come to. Have you ever landed in the director's chair? If not, what are you do you intend to do that at some point in your career? I have tried my hand at it a couple of times. Um, I don't know if I'm brave enough to do it locally on a commercial scale. So I've done work um, for community groups, workshop productions. I've even done some work overseas, Belize. I remember offhand, I've worked with the theater company there and directed. Um, but right now I'm, in, I'm still enjoying acting so much. So I said, we don't have time for the both of them. Acting alone, taking up so much time. And the people see us on stage for two hours, I think, say, oh, it's easy, man. The preparation that goes into it, we rehearse for six to eight weeks, and we're talking about six hour days, going on to eight hour days, and it's a whole heap of work, you know? And so, but as I said, I'm still enjoying acting. Maybe when I get a little tired of it, or mm -hmm. want to try something else, I think I'll probably do a little more directing than writing, because I don't know, fancy myself that much of a writer. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you've, you've been able to, you touched on it briefly, but you've been able to attract younger audiences who don't know you as tight of how do you account for that ability to do that and get the younger audiences to receive you and even lately you were in this bigger commercial and it's easy to yeah, understand yeah, yeah, what's right. going on there. Yeah. How do you manage to keep that um, connection? As I said, you have to keep relevant. So you do your commercials, you do stuff. Um, TV spots are very important. So even if they might not have come to a play, they would have seen a commercial for the play. And you have to find lines that resonate with them and things that they can relate to. So the young people say, hey, you see, you know, I'm doing another thing there, yeah. Uh, yeah, them say, or even with JCDC, they, they come through the school system and they see me adjudicate them say, that time I'm see on TV. You know, I'm see one thing again and yeah. Or you go and you do a workshop and you go to a school and you give a talk. Because I, I do that from time to time as well, give motivational talks. So I've talked some theatre mm -hmm. and the career, the theatre industry. And and so they they see you as somebody they can relate to you. Then, yeah, man, we talked to him, we come to school the other day, and he may not show up and he may say, Add for me, I go watch the show and thing. And mommy can go show. And, you know, that's the thing that keeps me relevant. You know, and you have to do that. Mm -hmm. You can't lock yourself in a box and say, I'm Misa. 80s man or 90s man and now stick to that no mm -hmm. okay. can't make when schools trying to put up my face and say who's that and them say Charles I had no, no can't, can't make, make that happen I have to make them know who is Glenn Titus Gamble okay. yeah <laughs> is there a goal you've tried to accomplish with your art typical uh, typical people get bored with trying to do the same thing night after night and they probably eventually try and do something else, some other profession. What motivates you to keep going on stage? Or is there a particular, say, when I go out there, I want to make sure I leave the audience with this, I want to make sure that at the end of it all, they can say, this is what uh, Glenn Campbell left for them to feel and experience. Yeah. Um, all right, that's probably a two-part question. I'll answer, I'll answer the part in terms of how do I do it night after night after mm -hmm. night. And it's a simple answer, my audiences. Audiences come day in, day out. Um, and each night, for someone in the audience, is their first time experience. Even if it's not first time going to play, that production is the first time experience for them. And so it's new and fresh for them. And so I, every night I go on stage, I have to make sure, say, my A game is up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Somebody out there is having this experience for the first time, and I have to make sure it's good for them. So you go out there with that perception, you have to hit the bar every time and go higher than the bar sometimes. 
we have audience members that see some of our plays 5, 10, 15. We have one gentleman who some of the plays have missed it 25 times. Mm-hmm. You understand me? A dedicated customer. The first time he come, I'm enjoy it. I'm saying, all right, mommy and daddy bring them come. Friend come, my friend bring them come. Somebody have visit from them. Somebody come for a few and I'm saying, no man, come, come for a few now. Come on, man. come relax and think a little bit. And each time he's coming with the expectation that what he saw the first night, I got him from him, I was saying that. Mm-hmm. So you can't change up the thing for him. You can't all of a sudden fling in a world. I'm saying, but that was, I bring him reverent. Yeah. You know, and pastor come and sit on the side and say, oh, Charlie, you can't go. <laughs> Production of it. No, same thing that him say is that him expect for him guess them say, and it's the same thing. That, that's one of the things we say. Whatever we do on opening night, should be the same thing we do on the fiftieth performance, the hundredth performance, or the two hundredth performance. Consistency and a high level of professionalism mm-hmm. has to be maintained. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so we we try we aim at that every single night. We keep doing the same thing and doing it right every single night so that the audience member and we ourselves have fun every single night right. that we go out there I know, man. just the second question is that you're an artist artists want to convey a message with their art what is the message that you've sought to convey as an artist um, for me and my legacy I would hope that people would say dedicated disciplined Thespian, a level of professionalism, level of worth, work ethics, everything. You know, if there's young people talk about up, 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 we up, we up. Yeah, because people, younger people in the business and audience members are looking on, whether you know it or like it or not, they are looking on. So whenever Glenn can become and you see my stage and look, look like I'm tired, I'm not really want to be here. Mm-hmm. That's not them. Every night they come and say, how you do it, Glenn? You look like you enjoy yourself, or you look fresh, and you look excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Every night me up there, me excited. As I said earlier, a night when I'm not on stage, it's, it's, a, it's a dull night for me. All right. <laughs> Message to the youngsters who wanna follow in your footsteps, wanna you know become actors, become you know long-lasting household names, that kind of thing. What what do you tell them? All right. Um, in terms of relating to the industry directly, I ask them and I beseech and I beg them: be dedicated and disciplined. Because as I mentioned before, that is one of the things that I'm seeing to kind of start. Take root. Yeah. And we don't like it. Yeah? A show's supposed to start at 8 o'clock. You can't come there at 5 to 8 and think so you're going to give a hundred because you're just a blow shot because you're on half a road. Your mind not set away where you're supposed to be focused and ready for do this thing. Your body may be even too. Not in a condition where you're supposed to be whatever character you're playing. You're in the right frame. Mm-hmm. You know, so you have to be dedicated and respect your audience. Just as much as them are real and go, Glenn died to scam, say. Them say, I say, what if I go away? Mm. I disrespect, we don't take people for idiot. Yeah, you can't do that. So you have to be dedicated and disciplined. You're not going to make a million first year, second year, third year, or even fourth year. Mm-hmm. You know, I ever drive a big car. But stick with it. If this is your passion, this is what you think you were put on this earth to do, then hopefully you reach a stage where you can start see what you put in and start to reap some of the rewards. So that's what I tell them. Be disciplined and dedicated. And then also, I tell them education Mm -hmm. is essential. All right. Um, For me, I started while in school. So my education thing kind of get like a wobble up and thing away. I've gone through it. I advise people that's not the easiest way to do it. 
So study is one thing. Study and work is another thing. Study, work, and the theater, and raise a family. <laughs> Yo, yeah. crazy thing. So I tell young people, say, do your education now, especially when somebody else appears for it. Right? <laughs> Mommy, daddy, guardian, whoever. Somebody else has decided they might try with you. So take it. Run with it. Enjoy it. All right? So be educated. One thing. Two, I always tell me, also in terms of education, it's always safe and a sensible thing to have something else you can fall back on. Because theatre is a seasonal thing where anything can disrupt it. Kingston lockdown, state emerged for two weeks, me not work. And even after the curfew lift, people still not sure if they for gold, so I'm still not the work. A production open today, hurricane come tomorrow, I don't have no work for the rest of the year. If it's a good lick we get. So a good thing say, me study like public relations. Good thing say, me not too bad with my English and things. So I could find other work and other things to do. In the meantime, while theatre is down. And, and then also, I tell him that you need to be educated. Because talent is one thing. But social talent, now we get you to this one. You see in work can run. But without the training and the guidance of somebody else. He would have reached so far, probably no further. It's the same thing with theatre. You can have raw talent and you can say a line and it's naturally funny. But if you don't study and if you don't pursue and try to bet yourself year after year, production after production, mm-hmm. you better reach a stage where and say, all right, we see that already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not going to further what happened. All you can do is go for your head, tap on your head, whatever. Yeah? You need to be able to move on and do something else. Be educated so that you can do different kind of characters. Have a command of the English language. Be able to do both Patois and English and probably do something with a little accent sometimes. You know, be expose yourself. I know people have YouTube and internet, you can learn anything. Mm-hmm. Be educated to make yourself a better performer. All right, I guess the final word is yours. What's the Last word to Jamaica and diaspora persons listening. What do you want them to leave? Uh, what do you want to leave them with from Glen Campbell to? Um, theater in Jamaica is alive and well. I remembered when I first went on stage. As I mentioned before, it was just as a hobby. Um, but I had a passion for it. Now I'm doing theater full time. I still have a passion, even a bigger passion, and. I want as many Jamaicans as possible to just take take a risk one day and just venture out. Come and see what we're doing. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. After 35 years, yes, we're there. Big up. <laughs>